You ever taken a shot in Rocket League and just... Yeah. Hey, what's going on guys? Today, we're talking about how to take good shots in Rocket League. We're gonna cover how to put your shots on target, how to get power behind your shots, how to place them exactly in the net where you want them, and in between all of that, I'll be giving you tons of small tips and tricks on how to make these things easier to execute, so make sure you stick around to the end of this video so you don't miss any of it. Also, before we get started, I wanted to let you guys know that I stream every Saturday and Monday on Twitch at 4 p.m. EST. I'll put a link in the description to my Twitch channel and I would really appreciate if you could drop a follow and come hang out while we play some games. Drop a like on this video if you want to support the channel. There are tons of different ways you can take a good shot at the net. Let's break a shot down into three categories. Your momentum, the ball's momentum, and the contact on the ball. When it comes to your momentum, the more mass and speed that you put behind your hit, the more power will come from your contact. I call this concept your straight line mass. If you want to learn more about straight line mass, I cover it in more depth in my Rocket League course. You can click the link in the description to find out more. But in short, straight line mass is the amount of your car's mass pushing into the ball in a straight line in the direction that you're driving into the ball. The more mass you have on this straight line, the more power your hit's going to generate. That means the most power you can generate from this technique is by hitting the ball in a straight line from the corner of your tail pushing through the opposite corner of your nose. That being said, it requires a circumstance to line up for that angle of a touch, and most of the time the situation will call for you to use your nose to shoot, which still generates close to the same amount of power as the corner touch because you have all the mass from your tail to your nose behind the ball and on this line. You can still generate power using any line of mass through your car, but the more of your car you put on this line, the more power your hit's going to generate. Our speed also affects the power of the ball, so the faster you're going, the easier it is to generate power, the slower you're going, the less power you're going to get from your hit. The ball's momentum. When it comes to the ball's momentum, there are four different situations to account for. Ground shots, volleys, half volleys, and aerials. A general rule for all four situations is whenever the ball is moving in a direction, if we hit the ball in a direction range of a 90 degree angle change or more, we will be adding power to it. This is because at these angles, we're not going against the ball's momentum and we're actually adding to its speed with our hit. As soon as we hit under that angle, we're now fighting against the ball's momentum with our hit and it will be more difficult to generate power. So when possible, try to approach the ball on a line that lets you hit it within that 90 to 180 degree range. Ground shot. Shots. A shot taken from the ground with the ball on the ground as well. For power on ground shots, all we need to think about is getting our straight line mass in line with that 90 to 180 degree range on the X axis to generate the most power. But when it comes to shooting under the 90 degree angle, then we want to focus on getting as central of a hit as possible so that we're pushing against the ball's momentum with as much mass as possible. The more direct that we go against the ball's momentum, the more mass is required to generate that power. Volleys, a shot taken from the ground, but before the ball touches the ground. For power on volleys, we must now include the momentum that the ball has on the y-axis in addition to its momentum on the x-axis. Similar to the x-axis, when the ball's momentum is up or down, hitting the ball within the range of 90 to 180 degrees will add power to the ball's path with ease. When hitting under the 90 degree angle, we're now going against the y-axis momentum, making it more difficult to generate power and requiring more mass behind the ball for the hit. So when making contact for a volley, try to line yourself up to a hit at an angle within the 90 to 180 degrees for both the X and Y axes independently. Anything in the 0 to 90 degree range will require more mass behind the hit to change the ball's direction with power. Half volleys. A shot directly after a bounce. For power on half volleys, we want to hit the ball directly after it bounces. We're again dealing with the X and Y axes, but this time we're allowing the ground to shift the ball's momentum on the Y axis before we hit it. If we hit the ball on its way down to the ground before it bounces, we're fighting the ball's momentum on the Y axis. But when we allow the ball to bounce, its Y axis momentum is now going upwards and our hit will add to that ball's upward speed. This is one of the most deadly shots you can take when mastered. It's incredibly difficult to react to the speed and direction change that a half 
half volley hit can give to a ball when you're defending. Aerials, a shot taken from the air with the ball also in the air. For power on aerials, it is near identical to generating power on a volley. The only difference is you likely won't have access to a flip to help you generate more power on contact, so you'll want to manipulate your car's position to put as much mass and speed behind your hit as possible. The same logic of the X and Y axes apply to an aerial. 90 to 180 degrees goes with momentum to add power. 0 to 90 degrees is fighting against momentum to add power. Point of contact. Now that we understand how to efficiently generate power on a hit, let's talk about applying accuracy. Accuracy is fairly easy when you're looking at the basics of it. It's a common misunderstanding that you have to be moving or dodging in the direction that you want to hit the ball in order for it to go in that direction. This is not true at all. You'll generate more power by doing this, but accuracy comes 100% from the point of contact on the ball. Anywhere you touch the ball, it will move in a straight line directly opposite of your point of contact. So picture it like this. Any touch you get, facing any direction, will hit the ball as if you are driving in a straight line onto that spot you made contact with, but it will only apply the amount of mass you have on that line. If you hit the ball on the left, it will go right. If you hit the ball on the right, it will go left. If you hit the ball low, it will go high, and if you hit the ball high, it will go low. So now, couple this thought process with where you want the ball to go, and you should start being able to visualize where you should be making contact to get it going in the right direction. A method that I call ball net ball. First, I quickly look at the ball to gauge where it is and how it's moving. Then, I look at the spot in the net that I'm trying to place my shot. And then very quickly, I move my eyes back onto the ball, but this time I have a target in mind since I looked at where I wanted to place my shot. I keep my eyes on the ball and visualize a straight line to the spot that I want to place my shot. And I set up my approach to allow me to make the correct contact to put my shot on the line that I visualized. This is something that will take time and practice, so it might feel uncomfortable at first, but the more you do it, the more natural it becomes, and the less you'll have to think about it when executing. Now the final thing to tie your power and accuracy together is timing your dodge. The reason I waited until the end to explain this is because it's an extremely common mistake to put too much focus into your dodge when shooting. All all the concepts I explained previously should lead into your dodge when using it for a shot because if you dodge too early, you change the amount of mass on your straight line mass and you change your point of contact which changes your accuracy. If we dodge too late, our dodge doesn't affect the ball in any way and we miss out on that extra power. So when dodging for your shot, we want to make sure that we're dodging as close to the moment of impact on the ball as we can. That way, our car's mass is behind the ball and our contact is where we wanted it to be. The timing here is tricky and crucial, but practice makes perfect. So I've put the training pack code I made for this video on screen and in the description for you to use to practice your power and accuracy, and I'll also include some other training pack codes in the description that you can use to practice these concepts as well. So to wrap things up, use your car's mass behind your hit to add more power. Touching the ball at an angle of 0 to 90 degrees to its path fights against the ball's speed. Touching the ball at an angle of 90 to 180 degrees to its path adds to the ball's speed. Your point of contact is what entirely determines your accuracy, and dodging into the ball during your contact will add even more power. If this video helped you, please consider subscribing to the channel. I upload a new educational Rocket League video every Saturday so that I can help you get better faster. We also have a Discord where the community can come together to ask questions about improving, find new friends to play ranked with, post cool clips, or just hang out and talk with me. I hope you enjoyed this video, and most importantly, thanks for watching.